Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, this is uh, uh, Artnet's series called um, A Closer Look, and it's a new series that we have um, on Artnet. And our goal is to have lively and fun conversations around both um, Artnet auctions and online art. So today we're going to be looking at the rise in contemporary African art, um, both on the continent and uh, in the diaspora in, in the US and elsewhere. And um, today I'm joined by Serge Tiroche. He's the co-founder of the Tiroche de Leon collection. He has a background in banking and investment and um, he's been focusing a lot on contemporary African art uh, from the continent um, he also has a residency that he will tell us a little bit more about. I'm also joined by Johannes Vogt of Artnet Auctions, um, and third by Anders Pedersen, who is the uh, founder and managing director of Art Tactic. That's an art market research and analysis uh, company that's been operating for about two decades. I'm going to start by letting the panelists tell us a little bit more about their background and their connection to contemporary African art. So um, Serge, why don't we start with you? Uh, sure. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, nice to, uh, I don't know who's, who's, who's out there, but uh, nice to see you all. Thank you for joining us. Um, so a little bit about myself. I'm basically Israeli, uh, born and bred in the family of art collectors, dealers, gallerists, auction house owners, etc., etc. Uh, went into banking uh, earlier after graduating from uh, business school, uh, worked for Citigroup in private banking, uh, initially in Switzerland, then in London, then in Tel Aviv, opened a private banking office there, and then did the same thing in Turkey. Uh, during all that time, I was a collector, primarily of contemporary art. Um, and in uh, 2007, I decided to leave banking and combine my two passions for collecting contemporary art and investments. Uh, and I did that through uh, a number of different uh, entrepreneurial platforms that I founded. The first was a Start, an art incubator project supporting a generation of uh, new Israeli artists. This was in 2008. Uh, a year later, I uh, got involved with a company called Mutual Art and the Artist Pension Trust. Um, and I was uh, an investor there and I was uh, chairman, global chairman of the Artist Pension Trust for two years. Uh, I left that position in 2011 and started an art fund called the Tiroche de Leon Collection. The art fund is called Art Vantage and it owns a collection called the Tiroche de Leon Collection. And the focus of that fund was really uh, uh, contemporary art from developing markets all over the, the developing world with the majority of uh, assets going to investments in Asia. Um, the, that was really the first time that I started really combining the two things, uh, the, the passion for collecting and the investment angle. Um, and uh, one of the areas we started looking at back then was uh, Africa, of course. Uh, but Africa had a very small allocation initially, uh, about 10% uh, of, of our overall uh, investment strategy. And that was already a very bullish um, back, you know, we started in 2012. Uh, so that was already a very bullish statement about Africa back then, because if you thought about, you know, how much it represented of, uh, in the market in terms of turnover back at that time, it was more like 1%. And, you know, we, we, we gave it an allocation of 10%. So that was already very bullish. And as we got more and more involved, and I started collecting uh, and traveling uh, to Africa more regularly, uh, we actually increased that allocation and uh, at the peak we, we reached about 15 percent of our assets invested in africa and we actually with the african with the growth uh, and you know the coming of age of the market we were able to actually turn over that part of the portfolio uh, quite rapidly so in terms of our overall performance numbers africa was a very strong contributor uh, to the performance of the fund um, in 2017 we stopped stopped acquisitions for that fund. And then I decided that I wanted to continue my own private investments uh, and collecting primarily in Africa. And since 2017, I founded a new platform called Africa First. Um, the website is uh, africafirst.art um, and uh, built a collection of around 400 pieces now. Um, and it's really a platform to promote uh, emerging voices from Africa, and I'm sure I'll be speaking more about it later on. Uh, but part of that is obviously the residency that Eileen mentioned as well, yeah. 
Yeah, and we'll definitely hear a little bit more about that. Um, and Anders, tell us a little bit about your background and your connection here. Uh, thanks, Lynn. Thanks for inviting me to the panel. Uh, so I'm Anders Pettersson. So I started um, Artactic in about, as you say, 20, well, 2001, so 20 years ago. Uh, not dissimilar from Serge, I also came from a finance background. I used to work for JP Morgan in the 90s um, and decided at some point that I wanted to try something slightly different, which was a bit of a hybrid of two interests. One was market and analytics, and the other thing was contemporary art. So our tactic kind of emerged out of, of, of those two interests that I had in the past. Um, so our tactic basically, uh, as you said earlier, is a, it's a London-based research company that we are really focusing on different areas. I mean, it's predominantly uh, looking at intersections between different types of industries. So uh, a couple of projects that we have is the uh, intersection between art and finance, which is a project that we have with Deloitte now for since 2009. Um, we're doing also things between art and technology, uh, which is through the, art, uh, the Hiscox Art uh, Trade Report. And uh, also now recently in the last two or three years, also looking at art and philanthropy. And that's really over, I would say, when we're first um, entry into looking at the African market was uh, a sort of a, an initial piece looking at the, uh, the African continent from the, the point of view of not the commercial side, although that's also another thing we look at, but also at the kind of the infrastructure and the ecosystem. So we presented some initial findings in 2019 at the Venice Biennale for the Africa Forum there, uh, which was really talking about some of the kind of developments which might not show up directly in the figures, but was kind of, I would say, some of the grassroots initiatives that's now taking place on the continent. So, um, and we just recently, we just published actually yesterday, um, a, a kind of an overview of, of the African art market, just to kind of give some sort of sense of what the recent trends are and, and, and so forth. So this is a really, um, I would say we, we we cover global markets, so it's it's everything from uh, Southeast Asia, South Asia, uh, you know, China to uh, you know, in this case, Africa, and um, it's really, as I said, trying to use analytics as a way of articulating um, trends, uh, identify you know what's happening, and also try to kind of create a debate and discussion around it. So that's that's the core of what we do. Great, great, very interesting. And Johannes, let's hear from you. Um, how long has Contemporary African been on your radar? What's your interest, your connection? Um, tell us. <laughs> yes, yes. <clears throat> so I'm um, the uh, head of the post-war contemporary department at Artnet Auctions. And um, Anders, to your point, we cover the entire globe. We have a very, very international audience. And um, Africa, is, uh, you know, I've been following it more from a distance, not as involved, definitely not as involved as Serge. And um, I, Serge approached me actually about, oh my God, almost a year ago and said, look, Ardnet has all the tools to be, you know, a really much needed centralized hub for art coming from the African continent because, you know, it's very spread out. There is um, traveling and shipping is not as easy. And uh, our terms are that we don't require for works to ship in order to go to auction. And um, then, uh, you know, we were able, I think for the first time to really bridge both the um, auctions department and the galleries department of Artnet. You know, Artnet had, has the, I think, oldest gallery marketplace um on the internet and that's been really exciting we've gotten phenomenal feedback from um galleries in africa and outside of africa but dealing with um representing artists from the african continent and i will say this is you know we do a lot get a lot of sales live and close every you know other week but um Africa present, as we ended up titling it, is uh, the most exciting project um, I've, you know, had the pleasure of working on since my time here at Artnet. Okay, great. And Serge, maybe I'll start with you. I mean, from my own point of view, I've been watching just a lot of energy and a lot of interest and a lot of talent that's been emerging. And I was thinking, you know, just a few years ago, I was at the Cape Town Art Fair and that had a great, they were calling it like a hometown or, or a local fair and saying like this, 
between you know both Johannesburg and Cape Town. They were calling it local, but yet there was already starting to be, and this is going back about four years, this very international presence. I felt like a lot of prestigious European and American galleries, um, at least you know that presence starting to grow. And then now, you know, we also have the contemporary 154 African Fair. So it's interesting to watch it. Um, kind of these these different sources of energy, I think, kind of complementing each other. And I'm very curious to hear about your view of the trajectory that you've seen, the kind of growth you've seen, and the way patterns have cropped up, and how those have been meaningful to you and the the artists that you follow. Uh, well, yeah, as you say, there's been a lot of energy uh, coming into this market from all sources, really. Uh, you know, new residency projects, new museums on the continent and off the continent. Uh, new galleries getting interested in uh, introducing African art to their clientele, uh, be it in you know colonizing countries or the rest of the world, uh, and and in Africa itself, the growing you know middle class and high net worth population growing there and finding interest in their own art. Um, I think you know 154 was definitely a game changer. It it really um, uh, you know opened up. Uh, the Western market to artists who were practicing in Africa at the time and gave African galleries a unique opportunity to be exposed to international audience at the same time as Freeze London uh, was happening. And um, there was a lot of excitement in the first uh, in the first fair. I was there myself mm -hmm. uh, and participated very actively, um, acquiring a lot of works. And you see, you know, the spillover effect of that, you know, coming into the secondary market, there's more and more auction houses that are putting together African auctions, and I've been supporting a few of them uh, to launch that. I think creating a secondary market is an important element of uh, globalizing uh, the demand for African contemporary art and creating visibility for it. Uh, through the auction houses and now you see, you know, even houses like Christie's that don't do auctions. Uh, they do collaborations with all kinds of, um, you know, people who help them curate exhibitions. They did collaborations with 154. They just announced yesterday that they're doing another collaboration of a non-selling exhibition in New York during the online 154 in New York in May coming up. Um, and, um, you know, it's just been it's just been tremendous to see how everybody is engaging. And, you look you at the, something in particular that that makes it so resonant with audiences like was it just that it was overlooked for so long i know a lot of museums are trying to diversify their collection like what, what's your feeling about why it's so like re why the work resonates so much with such a wide audience and seemingly rapidly <laughs> relatively it's, it, it's a perfect storm you know um, a, a lot of elements are coming together i mean black lives matter um you know, that certainly have, has had influence. Uh, the, the popularity of African-American art has had a lot of influence. Uh, African-American artists who are making it big time, uh, investing back in Africa and setting up, uh, you know, residencies and platforms and projects. Um, and um, I would say, you know, I think Biennales have also paid a lot of attention. The Golden Lion Award uh, went to a couple of African galleries a couple of times. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's just all of this coming together at the same time. Mm -hmm. Great. It's really incredible. And Anders, maybe you can talk about some of the stats, um, both present or may maybe start with your, your view of the growth that you've tracked, um, and then we can maybe get into the more recent findings. Yeah, no, I mean, it, I, I think the, the findings that we looking from the data kind of reflects what Serge is, is kind of already mentioning. I think it has been a very strong market, particularly in the last five years. Um, we've seen growth, obviously, last year was a bit more tricky for a certain part of the market. But then again, we saw, you know, exponential growth uh, in among the younger generations. So I think, you know, they, that, you know, any market is susceptible to, you know, specific major artists that might you know the same type of inventory and you know, might might not find itself to the markets i wouldn't read too much into the 2020 figures um besides the fact that as, as i said if there's a real there's a real sense of um i think you know strong strong you know demand and i i i think what's uh, what's happening is it's uh, what Serge also alluded to is uh, one thing is obviously kind of the overall interest in um you know i i guess whether it's black american artists or the blm but it's also uh, this infrastructure that the that search talked about these biannuals. Uh, I mean, we we looked at as I mentioned earlier the philanthropy report that we sort of took a kind of a view on on Africa to look at what was happening in the non-commercial space and 
there's been a almost a doubling of non-commercial, non-for-profit initiatives within the continent over the last five, six years, uh, which I think is corresponds with the actual, you know, the growth in the market. And these are, you know, whether it's the, the private museums, as you say, like the, the Sites Museum or the Novel Foundation, or whether it's biannuals like Dakar or Lagos Biennial, etc. All, all of these things together has, um, you know, so I think it's kind of created also a sense, not only a kind of interest on the sort of outside the continent, but actually within the continent itself. And I think there is a real sense now that there are infrastructure being built, which I think is a, incredibly important for the future sustainability of this market. Otherwise, you know, the international art world has a tendency to sort of go on the carousel and, you know, from one market to another and um, not always, um, you know, making it a sustainable effort. But I think now what what is you know, really what the numbers is showing, not so much in sort of necessarily sales, but in terms of the actual institutions being built up. I think this this is this is what I'm, I, I think going forward is going to be incredibly important for this market. And, and um, as as Serge already says, and 154 has been, a, you know, a catalyst for, you know, creating international interest in African art. I think, you know, the auction houses themselves are have done their bits uh, to also raise interest and all these things is good. I mean, the fact that we're starting to see um, sales having increased, you know, 50 to 60 percent over the last five years. Um, you know, it, it's a sign that confidence, you know, there's a confidence in the market and that's that's needed. That that's basically mean, means that people then start investing money into the market, which is incredibly important for, you know, not only the commercial sector, but also the, the non-for-profits. And, and what about, I mean, so we've, we've, all three of us have talked about the, the need to kind of the challenges that crop up when, when an artist is becoming popular, like you, you both want that support, but you also want to sort of not have speculation and secondary market um, run off the rails. Like, it, it, are there ways or there, is there an ideal way to bring up an artist and support them, but also maybe check some of that speculation, whoever, whoever wants to take that question. Sash, do you want to? I think um, I'm happy to try. I mean, you know, the, the market the market has its own rules, and you know, and uh, we can't avoid speculation. Um, there's obviously a lot of speculation in the African contemporary market, but it's very you know uh, targeted at the number of artists. Um, and um, I think some 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 artists. I mean, overall, I feel at the moment there's like uh, uh, an exaggeration of interest in everything that's black portraiture. Um, you know, and, and there isn't really uh, a lot of differentiation going on between, you know, what's really worthy and what isn't. Um, and I, I feel like in the, in the previous question, we didn't really speak about the art itself. I think what's very interesting about, about the African market is, you know, the quality of the art and the quality of the artists working on the continent, uh, how fresh, how innovative, how original they are, um, you know, how they use material, how a lot of them don't have formal education. Uh, you know, I feel uh, somebody who's been a collector for many, many years, I feel in general, I, I hate categorizing, but I have to in this instance, I, I feel generally that in Western art, there's, there's too much mind and not enough soul. And I think, you know, in Africa, it's, 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 it's very often the other way around. I feel there's a lot of soul and that's what I'm attracted to. And there's a lot of, there's a, a very interesting connection to the traditions in Africa but also in a very contemporary, you know, the, the internet, uh, you know, better communication has uh, allowed African artists to get international exposure and be influenced by it. But we're living in a very unique period where, you know, there, it's a transition period basically in Africa. Uh, more and more people are getting access, more, more people are becoming, uh, uh, you know, educated and understanding Western uh, uh, practices uh, I think we still have a lot of work. One of the reasons I do the residency is we have a lot of work. I was just having lunch with somebody else who has a residency in Venice uh, uh, for African artists, and we were discussing this over lunch today, that, you know, a lot of times our role as collectors and as people who host artists is actually to, you know, teach them the tools of the trade, not how to produce art, but, you know, how to pack it, how to ship it, how to... Uh, how to prepare a canvas, you know, basic things that that they don't necessarily, you know, get the right, uh, I guess, guidance uh, uh, in Africa. Uh, so those types of institutions are that are being created now are what are what is going to change that and make this, you know, sustainable because the creativity and the energy is there. Yeah, the quality of the work is there. 
Um, and tell us a little bit more about your residency. I was very, it just sounded very organic and very hands-on and I'm sure that you've had some really interesting takeaways or discoveries or relationships to emerge from that. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. I mean, it started uh, actually for the Tiroche de Leon collection. Uh, we had the idea to host residencies here and we had artists coming from you know, South America and from Asia and you know, a couple of artists from Africa. One of them actually um, uh, our first African artist uh, who came as part of the Tiroche de Leon residency was Terence Musekwa. Uh, from Zimbabwe, and I just uh, it was just announced last week that uh, he's going to represent uh, Zimbabwe. One, he's one of four artists representing Zimbabwe in the next Biennale, which, you know, that's so great. I mean, that's so wonderful that we had a small part in, in making that happen. It's, it's yeah. really amazing. Um, and, you know, and when I started Africa First, I decided that the residency program would be 100% uh, for African artists. And, uh, and it's only by invitation. I get a lot of um, artists writing me on Instagram or on, on uh, and I, you know, we don't really have a formal process for, for choosing artists. It's just me walking around, you know, discovering new artists and thinking, wow, this is someone I'd like to know better. I'd like to help more. I'd like to collect more. And that's how I invite them. And when they come, we really take care of them, you know, 180, 360 degrees, like everything, housing and materials, uh, you know, travel arrangements. Uh, they have a per diem uh, and, you know, and at the end of the residency, during the residency, we have open studios, we introduce them to local artists, we introduce them to curators in Israel, to collectors in Israel. And at the end of uh, the residency, we usually hold an exhibition, not in my space. I mean, I use my house, my private house to do some of the exhibitions, but sometimes we do collaborations with not-for-profit galleries or, or commercial galleries. Um, and you know, we had a collaboration that was cooking with the museum, but at the end of the day, eventually that didn't happen, but I'm sure we'll do more with museums as well in the future. So we're, we're, I, I have a long list of artists I'd like to invite, uh, but you know, we're waiting for the situation to enable us to start doing that again. Great. Um, I think if I may, because I didn't want to let that, that your previous question about the market pass and um, speculation, <laughs> yes, I guess that that's really a question for me and, and for you as the market specialists at Art That News, I mean, you know, we're all familiar. It's something that is, in a sense, inevitable. The market is a market that regulates itself. There is uh, supply and demand. And whenever there is a lot more demand than supply, then you find, um, you know, outstanding auction results. I guess one thing to note is that it seems in the last two, three years, an increasing amount of very young artists from Africa have come to auction and even in their first ever auction achieved extremely, I mean like six figure results, which is highly, highly, highly unusual. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, Serge gave a lot of beautiful answers to the question that we raised earlier, why now? And uh, definitely global outlets, I mean, especially thinking of Instagram, have made it so much easier to, um, build awareness from anywhere. I mean, even, you know, if you look at the American continents, artists are no longer required to be in New York or in LA. They could be anywhere making work from their home and uh, gaining an Instagram audience. Yeah. Which yeah. is happening. And I think that can be similarly applied to um, artists working in Africa. Yeah. I mean, do you have conversations like, I, like, you know, I know Nate Freeman did this wonderful story for Artnet about Amalaka Bulafo. And it was, it was such a fascinating story because it really showed, you know, both sides of that. And I'm sure it must be kind of terrifying when you watch, you know, work that sold for 10,000 of yours. I'm sure that means pressure for an artist. So, and I'm not trying to slam anything. I'm just saying that it does seem like it creates some challenges and Serge's residency. That's why I'm so impressed by it because it, it just kind of has all these great like organic elements that are really about like, hey, let's do this and see what happens, what, what grows out of it. Um, so yeah, so I didn't want to sound too negative or anything. Um, but on that note, Anders, I was hoping maybe, sorry, go ahead. One thing to add it is, you know, there's often so much hesitation and a little sort of a negative vibe about artists coming to auction. I mean, right. you have to just also always consider what kind of platform that gives to artists. And mm -hmm. especially, I think, with, with um, work coming from the African continent, I think it, it is a first-time introduction 
to a broad audience right. for most of these artists. So it is, uh, you know, there's always a danger, but there's also a major platform that, um, you know, brings uh, the work of these artists out in the world in a way that I think it otherwise would Yeah, be. for sure. No, I totally agree with that. Um, and Andrew, since you shared them with us before the call, I was hoping maybe you could um, share some of the stats that you um, had that, that really, I mean, stand out to you. It's obviously been a challenging year, so maybe they're not all great news, but, um, but things that, that you think are, are worth pointing out. Yeah, I, I, I just want to kind of uh, tap into what uh, both Serge and Johannes talked about regarding speculation. I do, I do think, um, y y in a sense, even if these many of these things might not be sustainable, I do think it's kind of necessary to, as I said earlier, to kind of generate interest. I mean, I think, you know, the spin-off effects of the prices that many of these artists are achieves, and I think it lifts the... You know, it lifts the you know the, the the threshold for many other artists on the continent. I think it like, inspires other people to um, you know to 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 do hopefully to enter into the market. I think also many of the artists that are successful now has been very uh, generous in coming back to their own country or to the continent to support them in terms of you know similar to what Serge is doing, you know, in, uh, residencies and you know foundations and setting up things to support the next generation. So I think you know if, hopefully um, even if some of these things might be unsustainable. I do think it's, it, you know, I think it would leave a legacy that's going to be really, uh, you know, really strong and really good for the future. Um, but yeah, so basically, in in I guess some of the key uh, the key findings from from this year was that you know we we saw um, some part of the generation of artists that we looked at is artists under forty five. So these are the uh, you know the, the the kind of the young generation that many of the, the artists that we have sort of seen emerging in 2020 has been part of. We saw sales increasing by you know doubling in in 2020 according to you know um, compared to 2019, um, and um, I think what's also interesting is uh, female artists. And we haven't really spoke about gender here, but I think female artists are uh, you know quite a dominant force within the you know the auction space. So you have the you know the, the likes of Malien Dumas, and you have uh, Julie Meretu. You have uh, you know also the older generation like you know Irma Stern and so forth. But you know they accounted for if you look at over a five year period, they accounted for forty one percent of the total sales. Now, I think the problem is a little bit misleading because if you're starting to um, Talk to people on the continent who's operating with you know living artists i think there is still a massive difference between male and female and opportunities for female artists to enter the market so even the auction data kind of suggests that you know the females has a very strong presence i think it's it's slightly skewed i think what's positive though is that there are major female uh contemporary artists that are reaching prices at the level of their male counterpart which is not the case in in the western world um so i think you know there, there, there are two sides to that but i i i I had a conversation yesterday with a curator uh, in Africa talking a little bit about, you know, this whole thing about gender and, and you know, to, to one extent, the auction market has reinforced this gender imbalance, but so has also curators over the time in terms of looking at Africa Remix, for example, in 2007, you know, the, again, 10, 12% was female artists, mostly was men. Uh, many of these things is kind of, kind of and, and that I think is something that, you know, hopefully might change. Uh, and I don't know if Serge has any opinion regarding what artists he looks at, but in terms of looking at female talents, uh, I think, you know, it's, it's going to be an important part of uh, the future and an important part of the kind of the, the development going forward. Um, so I, I, I think um, I would say from, from uh, looking at the, there's also very hard to talk about the African continent as a sort of one big place, because obviously you have East, South, you know, central, um, north uh, and west, and each market has its own, you know, identity and culture and, and so forth. And there's, the strength has really been this year, I would say, or last year was uh, Western African artists and South African artists and or Southern African artists. Um, but these things change year on year and very, very dependent on what kind of artist that comes to the market. So in 2019, Julie Metu was, you know, um, one of her best years that had an impact on the kind of Eastern uh, African uh, segment of it. But generally, I, I think what we see is that there is a um, there is a, there is a search in interest and, and particular um, among the kind of generation that I think Serge is focusing on. And, 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 it's, and, and I, I think it's great. I mean, this is the next generation that, you know, despite speculation that we probably inevitable will see, it will be, uh, you know, there will, there will be new artists that is now coming to the forefront, supported by 
uh, an entirely different marketplace that, I, as I said, when we looked at back five years ago, it was something very different. Yeah, actually, I wanted to just jump in there for one second. This is this is so, sort of an observation and sort of a question because I've been following the market for so long. And when I think about somebody like Elena Sui or or even Julie Mertu, the 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 rise in interest was um, maybe intense. But I guess speed is the main thing that I'm focusing on here. Mm -hmm. It's it's different to have. Uh, like or Kahinda Wiley, the growth and in interest there. It's, it's definitely been strong and steady for I'd say, at least a decade, if not more, as mm -hmm. opposed to this like compressed time. I guess that's the part that, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on if I'm talking about like the challenge of, of speculation. Um, yeah, just, yeah. Just, yeah. No, definitely. I mean, it has been a little bit, as you as, as Serge alluded to, you know, the kind of alignment of stars that many things has coincided at this point. I think there is also a if you look at level of pricing across different regional markets, they're quite high. I mean, I think re level of pricing in Africa is relatively low still, um, yeah. which, which means that is also, a, if one purely, purely looks at it from an economic point of view, there is a sort of a relative value play at, at, at here as well. Not only that, you know, the, all the other aspects are in place, but there's also a relatively affordable entry point for many collectors to, to yeah. start collecting. Yeah. Johannes, maybe you want to comment on that, how that affects what where you set estimates or reserves when you're when you're deciding what to put in your sale. Yeah, certainly. And uh, I guess one of the main things is to consider when what year were works made. You know, you'll find a lot of works at auction that are made 2017, 18, 19, 20, 20, even 2021. And um, that is, yeah, that's a whole different ball game and um, also a fairly new and recent thing that you know you find that with hot western artists here and there but uh, with the younger African generation it's very consistent and um, that is something to be weary of I think uh, Serge and I have talked about this at length and that since we are planning an auction I think our solution was to say look we are bringing in very fresh works but we will um, outline that clearly within the auction and say, look, this is work that's coming from the studio and that is something to discover. And those come at extremely attractive price points. I mean, definitely all below $10,000. Mm -hmm. And in general, I mean, we will, uh, I invite you all to, you know, check out the auction April 15th when it goes live. And there is incredible work. I mean, the quality is just outstanding. And there's a lot of the estimates that are below 10, below 15, below 20. I mean, and it's, um, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's an amazing opportunity. Yeah. What kind of response have you had so far? I'm sure you're getting a lot of inquiries from, from clients and, uh, and people. What kind of... Uh... Really, really, really positive. Mm -hmm. Huge excitement, I will say. And, you know, I mean, it still is relatively niche. You know, it's a small group of strong supporters, dealers, and sort of like people in the know. And um, they have, they're, they're very focused on it and very knowledgeable. So it's extremely exciting to them. And when you look at the auction landscape, there's really not that many places that offer sales. I mean, more and more now, but it's still relatively small. Okay. Great. And I just want to put out to our participants while we continue to chat um, that we are uh, opening up for questions. So if you have a question, you can put it in the uh, Q&A box and we'll, we'll definitely try to get to you. Um, so next, um, Serge, maybe you want to talk about what you're focusing on next, when you think you might be restored, uh, be able to, to restore your residency, um, what's on your mind that, that we haven't covered yet. Well, what's been on my mind mostly is uh, launching Africa Present on Artnet for the past few weeks. And I've been uh, speaking with a lot of galleries. And I have to say, you know, I want to thank all of them for being so supportive. We, we're going to have many galleries um, on the platform when we launch April 1st. Uh, I think, you know, everybody uh, realizes there's a need for a global platform like Artnet to be there all year round and not just when it's hot and trendy. Uh, to be a place to go for people to, who want to discover things about African art. And we're hoping to expand the platform, mm -hmm. you know, to do more than just galleries and auctions. Uh, but, you know, I'm thinking, I mean, I don't know if I should say this publicly, but, you know, okay. collaborations with, with news and content, mm -hmm. uh, a, a platform for, uh, you know, institutions, um, 
basically a, the place to be should be Artnet. You know, if you want to learn anything about African contemporary art, that's my vision, and that's where you know I hope we can take this to uh, in the next couple of years. And the more participants join us uh, from you know from from this ecosystem, the the better, and we'll get there faster. And it's you know it's a win win situation. The more uh, you know, I'm thinking even other auction houses and so on. I mean, everything everything should be in one place. Yeah. Um, and and that that's going to be uh, uh, tremendously powerful, and I think you know beneficial both for the ecosystem, the artists, the galleries, but also for Artnet and its shareholders. So it's a win-win, and those are the types of things I'd like to be involved in. Okay, great. And uh, just to switch tracks a little bit, just because uh, yesterday when you shared that you're in Dubai, I was sort of shocked that somebody's at an in real life art fair. It's, it's been so long for all of us. And you mentioned that there were a number of galleries there um, showing African art. Are, are they galleries that are more from the Middle East or are they from the continent? I'm just curious about sort of the makeup of the presentation. No, no, actually galleries uh, working with Western uh, Western African artists, Eastern African artists. There's a gallery from Ethiopia. Uh, there's a gallery from that deals in African contemporary art, but in, they have a space in Dubai and a space in Venice. Uh, there's a, a circle art gallery uh, from Nairobi in Kenya. Uh, I'm trying to think. Kristin Heselgaard, who's who's you know a Norwegian gallerist but very very uh, involved in the African contemporary market is here uh, with with a fantastic booth um, there's a you know major French gallery showing Templon showing some very good uh, African artists so no it's really the presence I mean you know art fairs and auctions they're they're they adjust to to what's in demand and uh, and you can see that very clearly here I mean I, I'm sure if you came to Dubai uh, art fair five, six years ago, you would probably find zero African galleries or, yeah. you know, very, very few African works. And now you can see it's probably, I don't know, 20% of the fair is, is, is African contemporary or 25%, yeah. which is great. Yeah. And then I think probably after Dubai, the next major sort of international event will be Freeze. The news team was talking about that yesterday, and that will also be obviously a much smaller scale than it's been in previous years. But um, I think there's a real huge level of excitement about in real life events opening up again. Um, we have a couple of questions that are rolling in that I can share and whoever wants to maybe put their hand up and, and address them. Um, I think this is one that we've touched on a little bit, but one of um, the viewers says there's a lot of talk about this being a bubble. I'm wondering what the panelists think about that. Um, I, I think we did touch on that, but maybe we could reiterate that there is a lot of value and that the speculation is sort of a, a secondary thing, but, but Serge, you wanna take that since I have you up on the screen? Sure. Um, look, my point of view is that the African market has tremendous room for growth still. I mean, when I started collecting African art, you know, I, I go back to what Johannes was saying in terms of, no, Anders, I think was saying in terms of relative value, when I started buying African art, you know, an MBA graduate with, you know, uh, like, you know, an average size canvas was selling in Africa for a thousand dollars, whereas in, in, in the US or Europe, it's probably more like $10,000 uh, for an equivalent artist and equivalent artwork. Today, we're looking at probably 3,000 or 4,000 to 10,000, but there's still a huge gap. And, and, and if you add in, you know, the interest in, 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 in this market and the growth uh, and, the, and the quality, in my opinion, as a quality differential in favor of African art, um, you know, those prices can still triple or quadruple from here. So, mm. yeah, I, I think we're at the beginning of, you know, a long term uh, um, balancing of, of, of value because the continent has been overlooked for so long. We started from a very, very, very low base and we're still very low. Right. I want to add real brief, um, Eileen, that bubbles is such a, is such a, a dangerous term. I mean, I think the art world always and has always followed trends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is a, a focus of interest in certain areas. And, you know, Eileen, I'm sure you have probably the broadest market knowledge here and I, I'm sure in the past you know in the rise of China Chinese art coming from China uh, was happening and then it was Brazil everybody wanted was talking about Brazil and then the broader Latin America and 
you know, I think it's always what happens is if there's so much focus and interest, yes. Can I say there there's less of an editing process happening right. on everybody's side, but then over time that editing comes through and there is um, a lot of value that remains. Yeah, that's great. I, 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 would agree. I would agree, having observed these trends over many years, I would agree with that. Okay, so we have another uh, great question. Do you see a need for physical galleries showcasing African art or has the online platform supplanted the need for galleries? I mean, the short answer is no, but maybe somebody wants to expand on that. People need to see art in person, I think. <laughs> oh, definitely, I mean, seeing the art in person is so you know, different to seeing it on the screen. I mean, we're, we're doing with what we have, but you know, this is the first fair I've been able to travel to. And even if there are only five galleries, I've come to see it. Um, and I'll be doing all the fairs, you know, uh, with with African art in them, uh, because, you know, that's where I discover new artists. And as soon as I can, I'll be traveling back to Africa to visit artists in their studio. I mean, the, the closer you get to the work, to the to the maker of the work, the better you understand it. And, you know, I think galleries have a very, very major role in introducing artists um to us as collectors and i think you know what we're trying to do with the auction um we've divided it into three distinct sections you know we're going to have meet support and invest and the meet section the idea there was you know to try and do a little bit the gallery job in a way uh, but to a much broader audience and present artists not just with you know uh, an image and the details of the work but more you know provide the bio of the artist maybe some kind of video about the artist or a Q and A, uh, in order to really, you know, give a feel for, who, you know, who, who the practitioner is and, and what the work is about. Uh, and I have to say that, you know, uh, since we started talking to galleries uh, who are our partners in this, we've had so many galleries wanting to participate. It's crazy. You know, I thought initially that that part of the auction would be maybe five artists. Now I'm thinking ten or maybe fifteen. You know, there's so many who want to who want to join. It's just a question of. Or maybe, and, and, and we're being very, very, very selective and only mm -hmm. taking artists that I really think have, you know, something very innovative and very fresh to bring. And I think that part of the auction will be very exciting uh, as it unfolds. Great. Uh, Johannes, this is one for you. Where can we preview works for the auction? More details about the auction in general. How many lots are you working with artists or galleries directly? I think you just touched on that, but maybe you want to share some of those additional details. Absolutely all great questions. Um, as we are an online only outlet, all our auctions are live for the duration of two weeks. So um, usually we have a very short preview period, maybe five to seven days before the auction goes live. So the auction goes live April 15th. So I would say starting probably like April nine or 10, um, there'll be a selection of lots online that are not open for bidding yet. And then the entire auction goes live on the 15th and then you can scroll through and the beauty is that there, there is time to engage in a conversation. So there's a lot of back and forth with clients, questions, you know, um, and you can really dive in. And uh, then of course we do see a much higher amount of bidding in the last, I'd say two days uh, mm -hmm. to close, you know, because everybody wants to, of course- uh... Check things out. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the other question? Artists directly? Uh, yeah. The in a way, yes, especially in that meet section. I mean, it's usually mitigated through a gallery, but that will be the section where we get works straight out of the studio. I mean, some are actually being made as we speak. Is that correct, Serge? And um, yes, the gallery support has been surprisingly high, you know, because a lot of primary galleries are very skeptical and hesitant towards auctions. Mm. So I think that's been a very, very, very positive Response. That's wonderful to hear. Okay, we have one more. Um, did we get through all those? Did I let you? Yeah, you answered everything, right? We didn't answer the question about number of lots and all of that, but I, I, I think that's a moving target. I mean, uh, one thing I'll say is that we're going to be very selective and it's not about quantity, it's about quality. So, you know, as work comes in, uh, we'll make the decision. I mean, because it's an online auction, it can be as long or as short as we want. And uh, it just depends on what material comes in. Okay, great. Um, one last one. What recommendation do you have for someone wanting to open an African art gallery? Okay. 
<laughs> I didn't uh, get geography. <laughs> go and search yourself first if you really want to do that. <laughs> I, no, I, I great... owned a gallery for 10 years, so I can't say that. <laughs> it's a great idea. We want more people engaging with artists, open galleries for sure, but take your time, do your research, you know, really find, connect the artists. Don't follow the trends, follow your heart, uh, you know, find artists you understand and you want to support in the long term. I think engaging with an artist is almost like a marriage. You know, it, it has to be, it has to be uh, based on fundamental belief in each other. And look, I think location is a very important question there because, you know, it's... Uh, I asked that. <laughs> you did? I did. I threw that in because I was thinking... <laughs> yeah, it's like... I mean, despite, you know, it's so global and online platforms and all that, but galleries still operate locally, you know, and have support yeah. from local collectors and so on. So if you open a gallery in a place where there's like 20 others that do a similar thing than you do, right. you're going to have a much harder time than being somewhere where you're the first, or the only, or maybe one out of three or five. Yeah, that's why I threw the geography part in there. Okay, um, another question for Serge. What do you look for when collecting from artists? What does an artist need to break out in the market? Uh, the, the, the good question, obviously. Um, I wish I had the crystal ball, but uh, I think, you know, for me, it, it, it starts with the visual impact of a work and, you know, and getting to know the artists and understanding what the practice is about. Uh, connecting with the person very often. I take the time to, you know, get to know them when I, when, when I can, when I travel. Um, and I think for an artist to be successful, um, there, there needs to be, um, you know, it, innovation. The work, the work, it can't be just a repeat of what another artist is doing or look very similar or a combination of what a few other contemporary artists are doing. We see that very often. And that's where I speak about being very careful when you're buying African portraiture at the moment. There's a lot of, you know, me too's. So you have to be very selective and careful. And I think for an artist to succeed, you need to have a strong gallery partner. You need to build a, a, a collector base uh, that is going to support you in the long term. You need to measure your steps uh, in terms of you know how quickly you get market exposure, how quickly you raise your prices, um, you know who you sell to. A, a lot of different things come into play, and and you want to build relationships with curators. They're essential in order to you know, build a reputation for an artist, get him into institutions, get him into biennales or her. Um, and you know, it's, it's, all of these things have to come together for an artist to really break out. Great. Um, I don't think we have any more questions. Is there anything else that anybody wants to add or emphasize before we wrap this up? Okay, well, if not, I want to say thank you to everybody for joining us and thank you to our wonderful panelists. This has been very in information, uh, sorry, very educational and exciting. Um, so, yeah, thanks again for joining us. And thank you, Eileen. Thank you. Thanks, Eileen. Take care. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. See you at the auction. <laughs>